Hey there YouTube, Arvin69 here. Today we're going to have another look at my QNAP TVS951X. Now, the reason we're looking at this again today is I use this for not only Plex, but I do store my photographs on here. Now, in the past when I only had my Netgear box, I did actually lose data on that through a disk failure. So today we're going to look at the QNAP cloud and how we access our photographs remotely from this box. And I'm also going to look at the hybrid um, backup station on the QNAP and how we transfer the photographs from here over to my ready NAS box through a schedule. Now both NAS boxes are set up in RAID 5 configuration so I can afford to lose a disk on each of these before I lose data. And if you do want to see how you set this box up with RAID 5 configuration, I've got a video that I've done on that and I'll drop a card up here, check it out and have a look. But now what I'll go and do, I'll go and connect this one back up to my network, power it on and we will have a look at how we access our photographs through the QNAP cloud first. So by the magic of video editing, that only took a couple of seconds, but my NAS is now upstairs, connected to the network and powered on. Now, to look at how we access photographs remotely, we need to jump over to the laptop and have a look at the QNAP app. So we'll jump in there now. So here we are in the QNAP application. If we jump over to File Station, I'll just quickly show you how I organize my photographs. So going to Multimedia, into Photos, and you can see I tried to organize my photographs by year. Now, to access your photographs from anywhere in the world, you will need a My QNAP Cloud account. If we open this up, and give it a few seconds. We will see that mine has already been set up and connected and we have green ticks everywhere to let us know that the connection has been established. So how do you create a QNAP account? Well, we'll go into that in a second. However, I have had to steal the pictures from um, the QNAP website because I've gone through this process once and I couldn't find out how to go through it a second time. So we'll jump to some screenshots and I'll explain what you need to do. So just before you can create your QNAP Cloud account in the NAS box, you need to nip over to myqnapcloud.com and sign up for an account there. Once that's been done, you need to nip back over to your NAS box and set the details up in the app within QNAP. So from the main screen on the NAS box, if you double click on the My QNAP Cloud, you will see the Get Started button. So if you click on that, you will then be asked to enter your My QNAP Cloud ID. This is the email address you registered with and then enter the password that you gave on the actual registration page. You'll now be asked to create a name for your QNAP device. This will act as the access link to your NAS from anywhere you can access the internet. For example, if you called your QNAP Bob, you'll then be able to navigate to bob.mykunapcloud.com and log in. The final step is to choose what services to enable and then your device will be registered to the QNAP Cloud. If CloudLink is not installed at this point, it will automatically be installed for you. So as we saw before, once you have your account set up correctly, It'll go, through the it'll go through the test phase, sorry, and uh, once it's completed, you will see the green ticks everywhere as mine is. Once that's done, you can now access your media from anywhere you have an internet connection. So let's have a look what that looks like. So here we are on my phone. Now, if we open up Q Photo, you'll see that my NAS box is already presented at the top of the screen here. Now yours won't be if this is a brand new setup. So what you need to do is click add NAS at the bottom if you're on your local network, it will detect your NAS and find it. If you're having problems, just click Add NAS manually, enter the hostname or IP in the box up here, your username, the password you log in with, and then hit Save in the top corner, and that will save your NAS box. And when you come back to the main screen, you will be presented with it up here. Now, if we log into it, you'll see on the main screen, you can change your views, etc and have a play with the settings. If we just go into multimedia and photos, you'll see exactly the same layout we saw when we looked at my NAS box. All the folder structure is there and you can browse these photographs anywhere that you have an internet connection. So now we've had a quick look at how to set up the QNAP cloud and access your media from anywhere you have an internet connection. So you don't have to clutter your phone with the photographs. You can just leave them on your NAS and browse them wherever you are. Next thing we're going to look at is how to do uh, back up the data from the QNAP over to my ReadyNAS Ultra. Now, I do know this is a bit of a niche um, backing up to the Netgear devices, but this will work for pretty much any other NAS that you do have. Now, the first thing I had to do in my ReadyNAS was enable SSH on the device. Now, word of warning here, if you do enable SSH, Netgear may deny support for your device. Now, I'm currently running on firmware version 4.2, so for me to do this, I had to download a bin file and enable it via that way. 
I will put links down below to articles on how to do that, but please be aware you do this at your own risk. So with that being said, let's jump over to my ReadyNAS Ultrabox and have a look at what we need to set up on there first to get the backups working. So here we are in my Netgear admin page. First thing we need to do is go into services and standard file protocols. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we need to make sure that the rsync protocol is enabled as this is the protocol we will be using to back up our photos. Next thing we need to do is make sure we have a folder set up of where we want to put the backups. So in mine, I'm going to back mine up to the default media folder. And I think there's a folder in there called photos or media or something. We'll have a look at that in a second. But once you've identified which folder you want to back up to, you need to go over to the rsync permissions. And if we look at the top, you can see I've got hosts allowed access ticked and this has got the internal IP address of my QNAP NAS box. The next thing you need to do is enable a username and password for it. So I've created a new user called backup and I've set the password for that. Once you're done, hit apply and that is everything we need to do on the Netgear device done and dusted, ready to accept our backups. So here we are inside the QNAP. Now, as you can see, I've got Hybrid Backup Sync already installed. If you don't see this, simply go over to the App Center, click on the spyglass and just type in Hybrid and hit Enter. There you go. And then just download it. As you can see, there's an update, but I'm not going to do that just yet. So with that installed, if we launch the Hybrid Backup Station, go into Jobs, you will see that I have no job set. I have deleted my job uh, that I usually have set up for my backup. We're going to recreate this from scratch. So first thing we need to do is go onto the sync tab, drop this down and click on one way sync job. Now our source is our local NAS box. So we select that and select. And now we need to specify which folder we are going to sync over to the other one. Mine is under multimedia and photos and everything underneath that folder. The next thing we need to do is add the destination. So we need to edit this and change this to rsync, a remote sync server. Now as you can see, I've got mine already set up. If you don't see yours, click add new account, give it a name of whatever you want, type in the IP address of the destination uh, NAS box. If you remember, we set up the backup account. So type in the username and password there. And then once it's all done, you can then test your connection and test your transfer speeds. So if I go over to mine and edit and go down to test, if you do test connection, you'll see it comes up testing. And then once completed, you get test connection success. You can also test the speed of your backup as well. And it'll tell you what transfer speed you'll get NAS to NAS. So with that set, we now do select. As you can see, this icon has now changed. We need to go into add and it'll now navigate on the ready nas ultra and find the folder structure there we are media and within media we have pictures and i'm going to sync all mine into there if we hit next now we can choose a schedule now we do want a schedule i like to run mine on the first of every month at two o'clock in the morning so click on the plus, we'll go, you can choose periodic, daily, weekly. I want a monthly schedule. I want the first of the month at or 200 hours and I don't want an end date. I want this to run indefinitely. Click OK. And that's our schedule set up. There are other options in here. You can have it uh, during inactive hours, run once after a link job's completed. But that is beyond the scope of what I'm setting up here. So if we click next, and now we're into the rules. You can use rate limits to limit the actual transfer speed between NAS and NAS. I'm not using any of that. And to be honest, I leave all these pretty much default. Feel free to have a look through and read um, what's in here. One I will say to be careful of is the remove additional files in destination folder. It says here, removes destination data that doesn't exist in the source folder. Changes to files in the source folder will be mirrored in the destination folder. So if you put something in your destination NAS that doesn't exist in the source, it will delete it. So just be careful what you're selecting in here. 
I don't uh, send duplicate files over as that limits in the number of files that are needed to be sent during uh, an incremental backup. Um, we don't do snapshots so everything looks good. So we click on next and that gives us a summary of we are taking everything from the media photos on our local NAS over to the ReadyNAS Ultra media pictures uh, folder with a frequency of monthly, monthly one interval and starting at two o'clock in the morning. Click create and that sets the job up. There we are, a one-way sync job is now created. If you go down to jobs, you'll see our job is in there. If we click that, click on start, this will start the backup running, as you can see. Now this will take anywhere from a couple of seconds to minutes, hours, depending how much data you've got to go, so just leave it to run. There we go, and that has now succeeded. Didn't take very long on mine because I have been running this job on a regular basis. I just deleted it and recreated it for the purpose of this video. So there we are. That is our backup job set for the QNAP over to the Netgear. There we go. And that is everything set up for our backup and our cloud access for our QNAP TVS 951X NAS box. I hope you found the video instructional or informational or of use of any way, shape or form. Like I said, I use the Netgear Ready NAS. I haven't tested it on other NAS boxes, but in theory, the R-Sync protocol should work with other NAS boxes that you have, if you have any in your environment. Do me a favor, if you found the video informative, useful, helpful, any way, shape or form, please smack the thumbs up or the thumbs down button, but please leave me a comment below, ask me any questions and I'll do my best to answer. And also, if you can subscribe to the channel, it helps out immensely. Until next time, take care.